Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to your fantastic, incredible, and oh so magical continuing coverage of the Defense 2 on a month delay. Brought to you and organized by Join Dota, commentated by Toshley, and sponsored by Razor and Ben Q. Yes, indeed, we're going to be continuing on with the group stages, which I believe are ending relatively soon, and we'll be jumping into the playoffs, I think. Could be wrong about that. But nevertheless, on the Radiant side, we have a very well-known team, a very popular team. Everyone loves them. They are the team of MTW, hailing from the land of Germany, with their team composition being from all over the world. They are the only team, I think, that's been able to consistently beat Na'Vi. I believe Quantic beat them once. They beat them recently in the TPL, I think it was. 4-0. Technically 3-0. The, the first game was a remake, even though it was considerably in favor for MTW, so it was pretty much a win. And they also beat them at the DreamHack Finals. So MTW are definitely a team to be watching. A Captain Sindran, someone that everyone absolutely loves, is a fantastic commentator when coupled with Toby. Absolute pleasure. And they're going up against the team, the European team, hailing it out on the Dire side. They go by the name of Fnatic. Yes, indeed. And thus far, jumping straight into the draft, we have Darkseer, Broodmother, and Lycan being removed by MTW. Very standard bands coming in right there. We have side lanes, split pushes, and we have that horrible nuisance who goes by the name of Lycan being removed. Fnatic responding to that with an Enchantress, with a uh, Nature's Prophet, and a Lashrak. So both sides... Relatively same, we've got lots of pushing heroes being removed. Fnatic, first pick going to be that of the Chen. Very useful, very powerful hero. A great jungler, a great pusher. Brings great teamfight utility with his global heal, as well as the fact that he can send injured teammates back to the fountain. MTW responding to that with an Enigma and with a uh, Invoker. And both of these heroes, very solid. Enigma and Invoker great give great team presence. The uh, fantastic Black Holder coming from, from the Enigma can uh, absolutely sway a team fight into one of potential complete utter devastation to an easy victory for the team of MTW. And of course the Invoker, of course the Malphite stun to come out of the Enigma is always good. He's also a very, very, very good jungler. Then we have Invoker who brings a lot of utility to the field, plenty of disables, plenty of AoE damage, as well as the ability to drain the mana of the opposing team depending on how he's built. Chances are it'll be standard uh, Exhort Quas, but you never know, they might go uh, Wex Quas. We'll have to wait and see. Fnatic, their next couple of pickups are Lone Druid and Venomance. So Venomance are very understandable, giving a little bit of push and counter push action. And Lone Druid's a very strong pickup by Fnatic due to the fact that he's similar to Broodmother in the sense that once he gets a nice bit of farm, he just keeps pushing. And Tinker is a perfect pickup for MTW because it's sort of a direct counter. Well, not really a counter, but it balances the field. Actually, no, I'm thinking of Broodmother, aren't I? Well, Ting is a great pickup nonetheless. However, you're going to have a hard time stopping that Lone Druid without some reinforcements. He's no doubt, once he gets the farm up, tanky enough to withstand against the March and the Machines and, of course, the Rockets and Laser Beams to come out of the Tinker. However, the Tinker could easily batter him down when given enough time. So Tinker is a pretty good pickup when you've got Lone Druid pushing one lane perpetually. You can have the Tinker come in to reinforce. It also gives a little bit of global presence, similar to uh, Nature's Prophet. And that combined with the Invoker. The Invoker, if he goes Exhort, has great global presence in the form of that Sunstrike. And then you've got the fact that Tinker, once against the Boots of Travel, can jump in pretty much not anywhere, anywhere where there's a friendly creep. He can jump in and reinforce the battle. So suddenly you might think, oh, it's an easy gank, and then Tinker comes in and starts blasting your ass with laser beams and rockets. And it's not a very comfortable situation to be put in. A very understandable ban to come out of Fnatic right now is that of uh, the Shadow Demon. We saw in the last game, actually, Shadow Demon and Invoker were used absolutely fantastically. You disrupt them, you curse, and then you time that Sunstrike perfectly, and it pretty much instantly kills them. And that, of course, completely... And, and of course, Shadow Demon, great... Hero for, okay, my brain just fired just then. He's got the Purge, which is a very useful, nice high damage and slowing ability. But of course, the disruption to initiate and set up ganks is absolutely beautiful. Especially if the other team doesn't quite want to engage. If you disrupt one of them, you're forcing them to engage. Either they have to engage or you get a free kill, which will make engagement, future engagement easier because all of a sudden one of their members are dead. It's a very nice pickup indeed. MTW is responding to that with a Queen of Pain taking out further AoE damage, which Fnatic have secured themselves in the form of that Venomance. Of course, the Venomous Gale and the Ulti doing Poison Nova doing a nice little chunk of damage over time. It doesn't do much damage at first, but it will rapidly build up. 
I'm ticking away into the reserve time for Team Fnatic. That we're thinking relatively long and hard about the fifth and final pick. Who do they want to remove from the composition? Who do they not want MTW to get? There are still some powerful heroes in there, such as Chaos Knight. We still have uh, some other powerful hero that I can't quite think of as of this very moment. And one thing I noticed that is I think all of the wood heroes have been taken out, all of the junglers. Crystal Maiden's going to be the next removal, so that's actually a good removal for Team Fnatic, because Crystal Maiden and Tinker... Tink Crystal Maiden would be a great babysitter, pretty much. Arguably one of the best babysitters in the game. She's just really freaking good. She's good at assisting in ganks, because of course you have that snare, and then you have the AoE slow. So she's just a solid hero all round. Pretty understandable for Fnatic to remove her from the free. How MTW going to respond? bond to this. There are still some, I feel Fnatic could use something, someone with a good amount of initiation such as a Tidehunter, a good Ravage, or something that can contest with that uh, Enigma. Another one that they could remove is Brewmaster, because of course Brewmaster, very useful towards the mid, mid stages of the game, gets very, very, very powerful at initiating with that split, and also is pretty much a direct counter to the black hole of Enigma, because it doesn't affect the, the what do you call them, the split units, the three elemental heroes that rise from the ashes of the Brewmaster ulti, they're not affected by the black hole. So we can just waltz through it, and then stun Use the earth, earth one, or use the tornado from the water or air one. I'm not sure which one it is. It'd be fairly easy, but Ras is going to be the next one to be removed by MTW. Want to remove those disables from Team Fnatic. They actually don't have that many. We, of course, have the ensnare from the bear, and we have uh, the 50% slow to come in from the Venomancer, but no hard disables just yet. Nothing that stuns, unless, of course, Chen can pick up a, a creep that can have, like, a troll trap or a uh, centaur. It's a slight stun, but it's not very significant, and it's, of course, situational due to the fact that you might not always have one of those he one of those creeps available. Beastmaster, very understandable pickup for Team Fnatic, because, of course, that roar is fantastic. It's a relatively long-range stun, a very... Uh, has a very... I'm trying to think of the word now. It goes through BKB, which is, of course, great for that Enigma. Black Hole to BKB. It's not going to do anything if the beast, unless you catch the Beastmaster. Simple as that. As for who MTW's next pickup will be, they've got a nice composition thus far, actually. Let's take a look at Fnatic's potential lanes. We're going to see Chen in the jungle, that goes without saying. We'll see Lone Druid at top and Beastmaster at bottom. This is, of course, Lone Druid's best going in a solo lane. We could see someone going alongside him as well. We'll have to wait and see. Beastmaster, of course, taking that off lane so he can continually stack the Ancient Camp with his boar. We're not going to be the next pickup for MTW, giving them another disable. So we already have Cold Snap and Malifus. And now we have uh, the Shackle, which is more of a... Uh, it's a bit more reliable than the Cold Snap and the Malifus, because the Malifus and Cold Snap, of course, they don't you don't stun and then they're stunned for three seconds. It's based on how much damage they take, I believe. I think the Cold Snap's based off of the damage that they take, while the Malifus stun just occurs every few seconds. So it's not a hard stun, but the Shackle, however, is. And it'll be very useful for future ganking. Fnatic now, we're looking at their fifth and final here. We've got plenty of reserve time for them to tick into. In fact, both teams have lots of reserve time, so we could be sitting here for an entire 60 seconds. Well, more than that, because of course there's the other team that has to pick. And right now they need... Uh, thinking of the lanes, uh, I think they want someone that the Venomancer can babysit. Such as Morphling, someone, a hard carry, as it were. Because chances are Lone Druid is going to be on his own, so will the Beastmaster. Chen will be in the jungle. So either they could, uh, they, they'll put someone solo mid, and they'll have, uh, they could possibly have, they'll just have Chen nearby in the jungle, and have Venomancer and Lone Druid uh, duoing it up. We could also see them down the bottom, we'll have to wait and see. But typically, we, we're going to have Lone Druid at top, we're going to have Beastmaster at bottom, and they can both go on their own. The trick is, who are they going to combine with the Venomancer? Who do they want mid? Because they have to pick someone to go mid. And they want to, of course, combine it with the Venomancer, as I just mentioned. Over onto MTW's lanes. Chances are we're going to see Enigma in the jungle. That goes without saying. We can see Brewmaster going to be the next pickup. This is going to be problematic for MTW, actually. They've got fantastic initiation with both the Brewmaster and that uh, Brewmaster and Beastmaster. Thinking, those are actually sort of difficult to say one after the other. It just doesn't feel right. But nevertheless, the black hole of Enigma is going to be rendered almost useless because of that split. 
you split, you have to make sure you catch the Brewmaster and the Beastmaster, because if you don't, Enigma will get stunned. This is going to be very difficult for MTW, and, the f and what makes it worse is even if there's a BKB, it doesn't matter in the slightest because a Raw goes through the BKB, so you have to pick up both of those heroes for a Black Hole to be successful. If you don't, it will get instantly stopped. And of course, they've got really freaking good initiation. Once we get transitioned to the middle stages of the game, Fnatic, in the form of the Beastmaster and the Brewmaster, are going to be able to just initiate all they want. While MTW don't really have a composition just yet that can withstand a lot of early damage. But let's take a look at who is playing who. Over on MTW side, we have Effing Mad playing as a role of that Enigma's Tapped and Cinder and taking up the role of the Invoker Funzy playing as that Windrunner. With the Lich being taken up by Kebab, and last but no means least, we have Shoksha, Soksha, taking up the role of that Tinker. And over on Fnatic's side, we have, uh, down the bottom lane, we have Fly and No Tail, taking up the role of that Venomancer and Chen, respectively. In fact, the entire team of Fnatic are going down south. We want to try and pick up the early gank, and MTW is uh, responding to that pretty much perfectly. So we're going to see First Blood here by the looks of it. Era playing as that Brewmaster, we have, uh, we already covered No Tail, we have H4N1 playing as a role of that Beastmaster, last by no means least, Trixty, who's a stand-in, playing as that Fnatic. But enough of that, who's going to be the foolish one to venture too far forward? I, very, I like this very much, they're using the Tinker to try and bank, to bait rather, not bank, I don't know what the hell that was. They're trying to see if they can pull someone out, and here comes the Beastmaster, wandering a bit too far forward, but reinforcements are so far, so close behind. And I don't think First Blood is going to be had. They're playing it safe. MTW don't want to push themselves too far forward, but the Windrunner is getting a little bit daring. But don't forget, she still has that point available. She can put it straight into Windrunner and then get the hell out to safety. Windrunner's just, I mean, Enigma's just going in circles, just going in circles, dancing it up, ladies and gentlemen. So Windrunner's going to be making her way over to the top lane, and that leaves the middle lane to be taken up by that Invoker. Fairly standard thus far, we're going to have Lich alongside the Tinker down the bottom lane, and this of course leaves Enigma in the jungle. As for the team of Fnatic, we've got Lone Druid making his way to solo top. We're going to have Beastmaster going solo in middle, as a matter of fact, with the Venomancer, uh, and uh, it seems Chen's going to be spending time in their jungle. And Brewmaster will be joining them over at this tri lane down the bottom. So Chen's going to be very aggressive. Counterwarding action going down already. He's going to be spending his time in the jungle, making it as making life as difficult as possible for that Enigma. It's actually uh, very nicely done by Fnatic, actually. The lanes are very good thus far for them. Demised. And already have we have the Tinker trying to aggress this Brewmaster as much as possible. And already this Enigma is just a little bit that a little bit too afraid to push too far forward because of course we have a Venomancer with an invisibility ward up that's venturing around the place. I'm not sure if they saw that. I don't think they did. I don't think they have wards here. So Enigma could find himself first blooded very quickly if he's not careful. Chen is here as well. Has an Ursa Warrior. This is not going to be good. They're still currently on the hunt. Counter warding action is going down so they do see that the Venom that they are there and Enigma is just going to be very very careful. And it looks like they might be going in on Syndran, looking out over in the middle lane, has that Exhort up, and looks like we're going to Tower Dive, we're going to go for it, we've got the Ursa Warrior to push further ahead and to try and tank up the hits from that tower, do they want to commit though, maybe they're just going to settle for the Enigma, but the Enigma has backed off, they are aware that there are members of Fnatic in the jungle and they want to stay close to their towers, they want to stay close to safety, but even if they don't pick up any kills, they're zoning them, Invoker can't push too far forward because if he does, He's, he'll die, but he's staying, he has to stay back, and as a result, he's not getting last hits. And the same can be said for the Enigma, he has to be very cautious in the jungle, or else he'll die, and if he's being cautious in the jungle, he's not getting experience in gold. And looks like we want to press the issue, we want to try and take on this Enigma, I mean rather the Tinker and the Lich, we want to pick up that first blood. Actually, we're pulling the creep wave, which, okay. Ah, this is actually smart, because uh, less creeps to, actually I have no idea. They're in a nice position. I guess we don't have to worry about the creeps auto-attacking their members in here. We're moving in. Frostblast land on the Brewmaster. Tinker trying to eat his way to safety isn't going to be enough. Venomous Gale has landed on him. And there's nothing that the Lich can do. A nice Sunstrike to come out. He's going to get it. Does a little bit of damage to the Brewmaster. First Blood has been spilled. The Brewmaster is very low. Lich want to try and pick that up, however. It's not sure if it's the wisest of ideas. Enigma coming in to reinforce. Malifus stunned to land on the Chen. And one more right click will take him down. And in it comes the Lich picking up the second kill of the match. Tinker already teleporting straight back in. In the meantime, Windrunner has taken a fall over at the top lane. Securing another kill for the Fnatic team. Transitioning from that middle lane. 
In the last hit department, 7 for 3 for the Invoker, looking over the Beastmark, we're 11 to 3, so Beastmaster doing a little bit better job thus far, having a better time at the moment. Tinker currently 10 to 2, working his way towards that Soul Ring. Having the boots actually buying that first, which is a good idea because we need to be able to escape from any bad situations that arise, and bad situations are indeed going to arise, especially with the current composition that the team of Fnatic have. I'm going to try and survive as much as possible. We have a smoke in hand for the Chen. It hasn't been used yet. It looks like we're going to venture into the jungle once again, try and pick up some creeps. I'm going to steal something, make farming just a little bit more difficult for the Enigma. Which is, again, really freaking good idea. Really smart. Invoker pushing himself forward. Finally getting a nice amount of last hits. Looking at the win runner. Currently 7-2. to two, Not doing a particularly bad job. Looking over at the Lone Druid. We are 18 for 1. So Lone Druid doing a great job as of this very moment. Securing himself a Centaur Khan. Chen looks like he's moving in. He wants to try and pick up a kill on the Invoker. Currently going full Quas... Ex Quas... Exhort. So there's not going to be much stability from him. He's going to, if he takes damage, it's going to hurt quite a bit. Only one point in that quas. Here it comes. We're going to try and tower dive. Raw to come in. Level 6 already. Venomous Gale going to land. And Syndra taking a fall very rapidly. An easy pickup for the team of Fnatic. Level 4 versus level 6. The Beastmaster is rocketing ahead. And they're going to secure the tier 1 tower over the middle lane. Easy peasy. Taking a look at the gold, 400 advantage for the team of M Fnatic. I almost got it mixed up again. Meanwhile, the XP is ever so slightly advantage for MTW. And Lone Druid's actually been harassed quite a little bit. He's getting relatively low on HP. Invoker trying to save the day as much as possible. Doesn't want this tower to fall. Wants to maybe get a deny. Is he going to be able to do it? He does not indeed. And the creeps get the final kill right there. Effing Mad waiting in the sidelines. Wanting to get in the right position. However, I don't think the team of Fnatic are going to push themselves too far forward. They've achieved great victory here. They've secured the tower. Now they're just going to back off. No creep stacking action happening just yet. Despite level 3 in boar. Which I feel should be being done. In the meantime, we're going to have Lich returning his way to the bottom lane, looking 22-7 to 7 currently the Tinker. He's doing a very nice job thus far, and the Brewmaster is getting zoned relatively hard, only 8 for 1, so he's not having a good time. Only level 4 currently, compared to the Tinker's level 5, so got the one level advantage. However, the opposite is true over in the middle lane, as we saw before. Invoker is still only level, or oh, managing to get his way to level 5, however, the Brewmaster is, I believe, level, not Brewmaster. Who am I looking at? Beastmaster! God damn it! He's currently level 6, as we saw with Aurora a few moments ago. But the things have settled down on both accounts. Beastmaster currently looking for easy gold, but I don't think he's going to find it. Enigma is playing a little bit too safe as is at this moment. They do have the ward. They do see he's there. But are the reinforcements? The reinforcements are on their way. Brewmaster is here very low in HP. And don't forget the Tinker is nearby. Raw to land there on the Enigma. And the Axe is going out doing a nice chunk of damage. And the Malfa stunned to land there on the Beastmaster. And Lich catching out the Brewmaster. The Brewmaster is going to fall as a result, trying to reinforce this wave. Sunstrike is going to come down. He's going to pick up the kill, does a nice chunk of damage. Is the damage going to be enough? The Brewmaster takes a fall. And currently the Beastmaster running for his life. With Enigma surviving that engagement. Very nice Malifus stun to come out of him. Pretty much saved his skin. In the meantime, the team of Fnatic are going to press the issue. They're going to push this top lane and possibly take down this tower if reinforcements don't roll in anytime soon. Power getting relatively low as of this moment, being brought to half health again. We've already secured the tier 2 tower, tier 1 tower over the middle lane. Which, of course, puts Invoker in a bad situation because he doesn't have the protection of the tower nearby, meaning he can get ganked far easier. And no reinforcements have to roll in for this top tower. MTW are just going to let it fall. And uh, they might actually just continue to push forward towards the tier 2. No, it seems they're going to back off. They're happy with the victory that they've achieved over the top lane. Retreating would be a good idea at this point. In the meantime, Beastmaster taking a fall over the bottom lane. Lich getting the last hit on him. The Sunstrike came in as well, as we can see. Beastmaster not having a great time thus far. 10 to 1 currently on the last hit departments. 31 to 15 for the Invoker, so he's doing a pretty freaking good job. He's very happy with the current rate that he's at, trying to harass as much as possible. The wind runner is a power shot, would actually do a nice chunk of damage, possibly finish off that bear. And I think he's going to go for a shack, we're going to go down. It does not actually get latched to the bear. Perfect right there. However, the wind runner might pay for it. Is the tangle going to land? No mana for a wind run, but using that bottle charge, you can now run away in case dan danger rolls in. Twitcher will not. However, speaking of danger rolling in, the Invoker's going to find himself caught the hell out of position. Raw to initiate, the Venomous Gale going to follow as well. Troll Trap, and a Sunstrike coming down is just going to walk away, not even hitting them. And the Invoker, Chen taking up a pill kill on the Invoker. Easy peasy going on right there. 
Broodmaster, however, still getting zoned really hard down this bottom lane. The Tinker's just harassing at every opportunity. 40. 40 last hits, ladies and gentlemen. However, the team of Fnatic realize that they have to do something about this Tinker. He's getting too much free farm, and Venomancer and the Chen are looking to press the issue. Chen working his way towards a mechanism, fairly standard. And Tinker's very close to his boots of travel, actually. And as a result, he does want to be that bit, little bit careful, because dying, loss of gold means the boots of travel aren't going to happen so quickly. And this is very good. They're going to pull the creep wave. They're going to get some last hits on this creep camp, which should uh, give him give Tinker the nice chunk of gold that he no doubt is seeking as of this moment. And down Lone Druid, pushing his way towards this top tower. We're not going to TP in and uh, solve that problem. But meanwhile, Malphite's stunned to land there on the Lone Druid, getting caught out, teleporting, transforming into the bear, but a shackle to the tree. He's going to try and deal right climate, and the Sun Drake going to come in, only getting the bear. However, the Black Hole is going to be used up to secure a kill on this Lone Druid. They better pick up this kill. A couple more right clicks were taken. Cold Snap lands as well, and the Lone Druid takes a fall. A lot of commitment had to be had to secure the kill. The Black Hole cooldown was used, and Voker even had to join the fray right there. He's not an easy hero to kill at all. Tinker continuing to farm his way to absolute victory over the bottom lane, only 300 away. However, the team of Fnatic realize that we really need to kill this, this Tinker. We need to kill him hard. We can see, I love this, we have Lich hiding on the sidelines. He realizes that the death is rolling in. This is going to allow Tinker to easily escape, or maybe reinforcements to come in. Raw to land there on the Lich. He is going to take a fall. If only he had the black hole at this moment, it would have been fantastic for the team of MTW, but they used it on the Lone Druid. Was it worth it? I'm not entirely sure, and... Effing Mad really needs to TP out, and so does the Tinker. They're rolling in. They want to push down this tower. I mean, they want to dive past this tower. They don't care at all. However, reinforcements are coming in. We have no mana in hand for the Tinker. He really needs to TP back. Doesn't want to lose that man lose the gold, but he wants to stick around in order to pick up the Boots of Travel. Does he have a Soul Ring, actually? He does have a Soul Ring, so disregard everything I said about low on mana. It doesn't matter in the slightest. And this middle tower, this tier 1 tower over the bottom lane, is going to take a fall. And both Soksha and Effing Mad have to be really careful. Especially the Tinker. Because, you know, he's very close to those boots of travel. In fact, he's only 70 gold away. Meantime, Invoker pushing down this middle lane. However, it has to be careful. Reinforcements are coming in already. Axe is doing a little bit of damage. The animation still glitched, which is really freaking annoying. And I notice we're not stacking this Ancient Camp. Which seems silly, because it's pretty much free gold for a very small investment of your brain power. You just need to... At the top of every minute, just pull it, and uh, you get more gold. It's as simple as that, and then you use the axes. It's easy-peasy gold. Whenever you're playing Beastmaster, you should always do it. It's super easy to do. The team of Fnatic lurking in MTW's jungle, looking for a kill, but I don't think they're going to find it. Lone Jewel continuing to push down this bottom lane. They're doing a good job in the push department. The middle lane has to back off. Tinker going to come in. Is this the best place to be TPing? I'm not entirely sure, but they've given away the fact that he had the boots of travel. Axe is doing a nice chunk of damage to pretty much everything in range right there. And this is nicely done. We're pushing this top lane, and we're going to push this middle lane. This is going to force Lone Jewel to back off from this bottom lane, else they face possibly losing something. Or maybe, actually, maybe that's not the case at all, and Tinker's going to have to be forced to TP bottom to clean up this mess. TPing up to top, it is the uh, Lone Druid, oh. They're currently chasing on this Lich, he could find himself caught out, but I don't think the bear's going to get that entangle on him in time, and he is going to easily escape. The tower's taking a few hits from the Siege Creep, doing a nice little bit of damage, being brought to half HP, but it's not going to be enough to bring him down in the end. I think we're not actually having that much in the bank thus far, Invoker working his way towards that delicious four staff, yes indeed. Tinker, of course, has recovered, has those Boots of Travels. Glorious item to have, indeed. Oh, I'm curious if the Chen has that mech yet. yet. He does not. He just has the headdress thus far. Currently, the Lone Druid, on, sitting on 28, 2200, want to work his way towards that Sacred Relic. He's got a good amount to go. Doesn't want to die anymore. It's definitely good getting killed on him. And meanwhile, MTW are going to push down this middle tower. Fortification going to be dropped. Are reinforcements going to be able to roll in in time? I don't think so. We have Venomancer coming in from the side, and he's just going to die if he pushes himself too far forward. But here we have the annoyance, ladies and gentlemen, this goddamn tornado. Oh, it's so annoying. You can see it just sort of uh, doing nice amounts of damage to the creep wave. This thing is just horrible. It's bloody terrible, and they want to try and kill that wildkin as soon as they possibly can, because... Screw this friggin' tornado. We can see it's damaging the creep wave, absolutely destroying the conversion, getting free gold for the Chen. It's... One of the most annoying spells in the game, I have to say. Finally, it's dissipated, dropping an iron branch in the trees, because why not?
In the meantime, here Ganner at the gold, 500 advantage with the team of Fnatic with a 5k advantage in the XP department. Jesus. How did that... I don't even... I'm not even entirely sure how they've got such a significant advantage in the XP. They're behind on kills. I guess they've just been farming better. We'll take in Gander at the last hits. 50, 50, 70, 80. It's looking good. Sun's right to come in. The damage is not enough, but the right clicks will finish it off with the Invoker taking out the kill on the Venom Ads. Easy peasy. Yeah, it's understandable the XP um, being ahead because look at their last hits and look at Fnatic's last hits. Also, Beastmaster's not stacking that Ancient Camp. Actually, he's stacked it a couple. He's stacked it once, but should really be stacking it more with that boy. It's so easy to do, and it's pretty much free gold. I think it's still perpetually pushing out every single lane and TPing back to safety. This is Brewmaster just having a horrible time. Currently 30 to 5, doing a horrible job on the last hit departments, and with Tinker coming in to just ruin the creep creep equilibrium, it's gonna be even harder for him to farm his way up. And as a result, I mean he has a split, but he's so low level that he's just gonna die really rapidly. All of them will die. So that counter that they had in mind of the Brewmaster, you know, stopping the Enigma and the Black Hole, it's going to be all for naught because the Enigma is just, or rather the Brewmaster is so far behind. They really want to secure this middle tower, but the team of Fnatic are unifying here. They don't want to let them have it. MTW, of course, let, yet to push down a tower. Meanwhile, the team of Fnatic have secured three, which of course explains the gold advantage that they have, although very slight. I have to say, for a three tower advantage, the gold department isn't looking particularly good as of this current moment. Double damage being secured here by the Beastmaster, or being activated rather. And are they going to use this to try and press the issue? I'm thinking a no is the case. Currently pushing out this top lane, but the Tinker's here to defend easy peasy. This bottom lane has a nice bit of momentum. Effing Mad and the Windrunner Funzy. Currently spending their time to try and push it out. I don't think they want to stick around and commit to it just yet, however. Ancient Camp still hasn't been stacked anymore. But they don't want to continue... They don't want to bring it down to deny range and then have to be forced to leave. So it's very smart for them to leave until more members of Fnatic are accounted for. And then we can hopefully just backdoor that while there's another fight or some sort of distraction going on to keep Fnatic away from that tower. Still have that annoying as hell Wildkin too. <laughs> Ugh, I hate it! Like, it feels, I just have this sort of, whenever I see it, I just have this sort of seeding hate that seeps out. And you just feel it oozing out. Kind of wanting action going down once again. Fnatic are doing a very good job of that thus far. Rocket's doing a nice little chunk of Chen's health. And he's also getting relatively close to that mech. I just believe he needs about 500 more. Working his way towards a recipe. And uh, the Eidolons actually did enough damage there. In the meantime, the middle tower has taken a fall as well. The two towers rapidly being secured by MTW, and this is going to tip the gold in a 500 advantage for them. The XP still being considerably in favor for the team of MTW. They continue to push forward. Cold Snap to land there on the Brewmaster. Is the split going to happen? I don't think it will. The Forge Spirit is doing a nice chunk of damage. Level 4 on both by the looks of it. Yep, 4 Quas, 4 Exhort. Getting that extra pushing power in the form of the Forge Spirits. Yes, indeed. We're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of split pushing. We'll have uh, maybe not actually. We'll continue to push out this bottom lane. Effing Mad and Funzy doing a great job at that at that thus far. Invoker just gonna farm up in the ancient camp. I mean the the jungle just that little bit. Meanwhile, do we have a radiance in hand? I mean, rather the sacred relic is indeed in hand for the spirit bear, giving him him that little bit of extra damage. And it's gonna make the bear a fairly formidable opponent. Somewhat. It's going to do lots of damage to the towers when he works his way towards them. Broodmaster still not looking particularly happy. 41 to 6. Compare that to, say, the rest of the team of MTW, and we can see right here that they're rocketing ahead. Boots of travel for the Beastmaster. It looks like. Fnatic want to take down this top tower. Are they going to be able to commit to it? However, the team of MTW are already rolling in to reinforce. And Lich better be careful over this middle lane. There's two of them and only one of him, and he's very squishy. While they don't have any hard disables, we do, of course, have the Venomous Gale and various creeps to come in from Chen's army. Unification is definitely going to be able to have to be had at this middle lane. I like what they're doing right now. An engagement going on at the top. Enigma getting very low in HP, using that mech charge already, and also working his way towards the BKB. No kills were had on either side, however. 
but they're gonna keep pushing forward. The bear's very low on HP. Easy kill. Shack. Oh, <laughs> I love this. It's not gonna result in any kills, but it's gonna be funny. Oh, and I was thinking, ah, oh, it's probably the only thought going through his head. That's kind of funny. It's kind of cute. It's not gonna to, um, amount to anything, but it's still a little enjoyable thing to see. I think I'm gonna defend this middle lane. Easy peasy. In the meantime, the team of Fnatic are going to secure Rashan. We don't have any wards to come in from MTW. They've all been counter warded. And this is going to be a very easy pickup. Already low in HP. The team of MTW wondering where the hell everyone is. And by the time they realize that they're at the Rashan pit, it's going to be too late. Rashan is going to fall. And who's going to pick up the Aegis? I'm going to guess the Lone Druid. No one. Uh, Lone Druid's moving in. Oh, yeah. Okay, here he goes. Immortality. And the team of MTW are going to seize this opportunity. They've had a little loss here. How? Let's try and break even. And we're going to try and push the tier 2 tower over the top lane. However, the team of Fnatic are coming in from the behind to try and reinforce. And this could be a very fantastic engagement for the team of Fnatic if they get the jump on them. Which they no doubt will because they're coming from the jungle. But do these give vision? I'm not sure if the Martin Machine gives visions. Oh, hello, Lich. Raw being used on him. That's an engagement ability taken out of the fray. But it also gives MTW the realization that we need to get out of there. There's an entire team of Fnatic waiting. And we're not able to get the tower. We brought it to half HP, the Forge Spirit doing a nice little chunk of damage as well as the Siege Creep, but the damage is ultimately not going to be enough. MDW thinking it's not worth it, let's back off. Invoker working his way towards a Aghanim Scepter by the looks of it. It already has that 4 stuff, of course. Enigma, as we stated before, working his way towards a BKB. Windrunner not actually having anything in the bank. Is it, we have something on the crew? We do indeed. A four star for her as well. And here's a Chen. Hello, I mean, hello, Beastmaster. Invoker doing a nice chunk of damage with the Sunstrike taking the kill right there. And they could have possibly pushed forward. There were several other members of Fnatic, especially this Venomance. It would have been a very easy kill. In the meantime, Death is being had. Invoker picking up himself a double kill as the as the Chen takes it four. Got to pay attention to this minimap, ladies and gentlemen. And this is going to allow the team of MTW to easily push this tier 2 tower. They're going to have no quarrels at all. It'll be easy peasy. However, the team of Fnatic are waiting for the better positioning. However, the team of MTW are just all too wise. Cold Snap being used here on the Spirit Bear. Going to be replicated pretty much immediately. But that's a cooldown that's been used. Shackle doesn't latch, however. Trying to do damage to this bear once again. If they can take it down, it's going to be an easy engagement. Because that Radiance does do a nice amount of damage. Especially towards the early stages of the game. Cream Camp even doing a bit of damage to the Lone Druid. But I don't think he's all that worried. Beastmiles are hiding in the sidelines. Waiting for the right position. Chen is here to reinforce as well. They're doing a fantastic job of defending this tier 2 tower over the top tower. Top lane, rather. And this annoying piece of bloody fecal matter right here. That goddamn tornado is just... It's not really causing any problem, it's just being annoying, because it's dealing damage to everyone that's nearby. It's a horrible... I, I hate it. But nevertheless, let's have a look at what's going on exactly, because I have a feeling death is about to roll in for some member of the team. We have two trolls here to try and reinforce and bolster the creep wave as well. Two troll traps, which is very handy. That was going to take a fall. Is the deny going to happen? It does not. Enigma picking up the last hit on that. Raw coming in. Here comes the initiation, but they're ulti to come in from. It's going to bounce. There's no creep to absorb it, but they do split apart. Beastmaster is going to take a fall. However, the rocket's picking up the last hit right there, and Chen's going to pay for it as well. Trying to reinforce, trying to teleport him back. The Chen backs off in the right amount of time. The split has been had for the Broodmaster. Lit being picked up in the air. He's going to fall. There's no safety for him at all. How, actually, he is going to get away. Effing Mad moving in position. Now would be a great time for a black hole, but he gets the stun there coming in from the Breeze Master. Very nicely timed Thunderclap going down right there. Now in comes the black hole. The only picks up the bear. Doesn't pick up anyone else and gets immediately cancelled. Beastmaster shackled, taken a fall. Brewmaster rather than the Vokers next to fall. Win run a very low in HP. He needs to win run to safety, but the Radiant's just doing too much damage. The four stuff coming out as well as poison landing on the Enigma. I don't think he's going to escape from this. 2500 in the bank, losing a little bit of gold. He's very unhappy about that. And the ticket moving in, was this the wisest of ideas? Maybe. Maybe it was a Venomancer rapidly falling down. He's going to rearm and re and return straight back to the fountain. Do they have a stun? The troll trap might be enough. It is indeed, and he is going to pay for it. Almost getting a kill. Almost um, getting out, rather. Immediately buying back. Has to clear down this bottom lane. Clear out this bottom lane, rather. Very, very heated engagement going on right there on both parties. And it seems it was relatively even too, but if you take a look at the gold, MTW are flying ahead, especially with the tower advantage that they've achieved, and the same can be echoed for the XP department, 7.5k advantage for the team of MTW. They're looking very strong thus far. Was the Aegis used? It was not used, so Lone Druid still has that Aegis of Immortality, despite that engagement, he's just such a difficult hero to kill. 
and is the one member of the team of Fnatic that are currently doing well. 138 last hits, higher than anyone else on MTW. However, MTW have, you know, 133, 136, 112. So it sort of, you know, evens itself up. Lindrod has a nice amount of last hits, but there are so many to come out of MTW. Everyone in MTW has a nice amount of gold and XP and so on and so forth. Nygma really wanting... I think maybe he's not going for a BKB just yet. He could be going for a Blink Dagger. Actually, he has the money for the Blink Dagger, so he would have purchased that up. Maybe he's going for a uh, BKB. Sorry, my brain just farted just then. For the next couple of moments. In the meantime, Tinker going to work his way towards a Sheep Stick. And the team of Fnatic, I think uh, we're just doing a little bit of counter warding action and uh, maybe look for a kill. But I don't think any are going to be had. Lich securing himself in an invisibility room going to allow him to do a little bit of scouting around. And the team of Fnatic do not know about this because there's no wards down at that top rune where he secured it. He's going to scout out ahead, hopefully look for something delicious and fantastic, such as an easy kill. Will it happen? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? And we're going to see the Chen creeps over here. This is going to give a head, give Lich an idea that there is a Chen nearby. It could potentially be an easy kill, but we don't know where other members of the Fnatic team are. So engaging might not be the wise of ideas. Do they have True Sight? Do they have Gem? The gem is at hand for the Venomats, so the Venomats ward, of course, revealing that, allowing Lich to get, just like, I'm getting the hell out of here, don't want to die. So that was actually, if that Venomats ward didn't attack the Lich, it could have been an easy kill for the team of Fnatic. In the meantime, Tinker's finding himself in a tough situation. The Raw could come out at any moment. The Beastmiles are getting low in HP. Reinforcements are rolling in. However, the mech could easily heal him back up to full. Tinker has to run. He has to run so hard. March the Machine's coming out. Reinforcements are in. He's going to push himself forward. Raw to come out as well as the ulti to come in from the Lich. Bouncing between absolutely every member of the Team Fnatic. With the laser picking up the kill. The mech not doing enough. And the laser from the Tinker picking up the kill. Easy peasy right there. But we're not done with the damage. I hear death rolling out. And yes, indeed, Cold Snap coming in on the bear. But the damage is not enough to take it down. That bear is so tanky. And the Lone Druid's not even there. Two four stuffs being used to try and get a shackle off or do a bit more damage. Malf is stunned to come in on the Venomats, uh, as well as a perfectly timed laser and black hole and not black hole. Laser, Sunstrike, and the missiles. And of course that power shot, so much damage, it wasn't even necessary. It was a very easy kill being secured by the team of MTW. I think the team of Fnatic feel uh, that this is gonna be a very easy tier two tower for the team of MTW. They're probably just gonna push forward and secure it easy peasy. In the meantime, I should drink some water. Yelling makes your throat hurt. Still feel I need to take a voice lesson to learn what I can and can't do. What exactly is it that rates my throat? This will be a very easy tier 2 tower to be secured by MTW. Fortification goes down. Looks like they're going to press the issue. Malthus stun as well as a cold snap to land here on the lone druid. And blink to split to come in from the beastmaster. This is going to force the team of MTW to gross walking up the invoker. This is forcing the team of MTW to back off. Lone druid is very low in HP but he has that Aegis and he's going to run out soon so going forward might be a good idea. And then we're getting brought to half HP and the mech charge being used. Picking up that Invoker in the air, trying to wait for the right position. The team of Fnatic are moving in to try and get a kill. Definitely Blast going out, going to push them back. Lone Druid very low in HP. Are they going to be able to pick up the kill? I don't think so. Do we have a Sunstrike to come in from the Invoker? I don't think we do. It probably wouldn't be enough to finish him off anyway. Shackle being dealt there. Fantastic Shackle to come in for the team of MTW. Colts have to land on the Beastmaster. He's going to take a fall, trying to lead them astray. This is the best idea for the Broodmaster to be doing. Reinforcements are coming in, but I don't think this was a wise idea, but he has plenty of tank ability. But Ticket coming in out of absolutely nowhere. Chen being bursted down. One more right click will finish him off. Laser beam. Oh, what perfect placement for the teleport. Managing to get away. So unfortunate. Managing to rearm. Wanting to get that last laser beam out, but it was not enough. The bear coming in once again. We have to remember that Aegis of Immortality is in hand. They're going to try and take down the tier 2 tower over the bottom lane, but the engagement is happening. Fantastic shackle to come in. Laser beams and rockets doing pretty much nothing. Power shot to come in as well. Deafening Blast going to land. He can't do anything. The cold snap is on him as well, as well as that Malifester recreating the bear, but it is not enough. And the Bream Master comes in. The blink, as well as that thunderclap. And the Enigma is very low in HP. Ice Wall coming out to slow the members. And very nice. The ulti coming in from the, uh, the Lich. As well as the Meteor trying to delay. This was very nicely done by the team of MTW. However,. It just wasn't enough, and I think the Spirit Bear is going to do a little bit of blocking of that Invoker, and the Radiance is just going to be enough. The Blink to Thunderclap is going to pick up the final kill right there. It was fantastic what they were trying to do with the Ice Wall there, trying to stop the entire team of Fnatics so that they can get away, so that MTW can get away, but it wasn't enough, and they did all take a fall. Very unfortunate for the team of MTW, and this is what Fnatic need to be doing to get back in this. But they're not exactly out of this yet. They're a little bit far behind. They're a little bit behind, rather. But they're not exactly... They're not in a... MTW isn't in a commanding position. 
Taking a look at the gold, taking a look at the XP, a 10k advantage for the team of MTW. With a 7.5k of force, then they're in a pretty good position. It's not commanding, but they're in a lead without a shadow of a doubt. And Fnatic, with that little victory that they had in the team fight back there, it's exactly what they need to do to try and claw their way back into a, into a lead. When it comes to golden XP, of course. So right now, the beast, the Brewmaster, despite being relatively low level, he's still capable of doing all manner of glorious, glorious engagements. Actually, not that low anymore. So disregard that. The Ancient Camp is finally, here's what I'm talking about. Nicely stacked Ancient Camp. Lone Druid is, uh, I think he's feeling pretty good about everything at this moment. Got some delicious gold. However, Brewmaster's not going to be feeling very good in the next couple of moments. We, I don't think we have any form of detection to come in from MTW. No sentry wards and no form of detection, so Brewmaster's just going to sit around. He's scouting out and they're telling his team, easy kill, easy kill. I hear a Sunstrike, I don't care. I think they're checking for Rashan. However, reinforcements have rolled in. And the invisibility rune is about to war wear out, so Brewmaster has to back off. Scythe of Ice being purchased by the Tinker is going to be fantastic in the next engagement, especially combined with a rearm, because you can rearm and Scythe of Ice again. Nice little power shot, getting vision of the Spirit Bear right there. However, they're backed off from the Ancient Camp. They're still, once again, trying to go on this Tier 2 tower at the bottom lane. And finally, it looks like this time they are indeed going to secure this tier 2 tower that's been standing for far too long. And there's little that a Fnatic can do at this very moment, but they're waiting for the right moment to try and engage. And will this be it? I'm not entirely sure. No, they're going to use this opportunity to take down Rasha. Maybe not. They're going to rotate to the tier 2 tower over the middle lane and try and take that down. Meanwhile, the team of Fnatic searching long and hard for any lone member of the MTW, but they're just not there. And we're going to push down this middle lane. BKB finally in hand for that Enigma as well. It's going to be great for the next engagement if a fantastic black hole lands. Moving in on the Spirit Bear, we've caught someone out. The Hex is going to go down. Power Shot going to land as well. I don't think the damage is enough. Axe is going out doing a little bit of damage, giving vision through the trees as well to see exactly where the team of MTW is. And they're deciding to retreat and not commit themselves to this kill. So Aghanim's Scepter being picked up. Hex going, Shackle going to land. Doesn't latch, however. Meteor going to do a nice little bit of damage to the Creep Wave, but not all that much in the end. You see Windrunner working her way towards another scythe of Vice. Of course, we already have Tinker having one of those. I can accept her in hand for the Invoker. Enigma looks like he's working his way towards a Hood of Defiance, which will then transition into a pipe. Over here on Fnatic's side, we have Beastmaster. Looks like he's working his way towards an Aghanim Scepter. But enough of that, the engagements are about to have, and Rocket's coming out doing a bit of damage. And this tier 2 tower is going to take a fall very rapidly. Again, these Rockets zoning the members of Fnatic don't want to get too close. And they're going to move in. They're going to try and at least get the Deny. Fortification going out. Is the timing going to be right? Fantastic timing to come out of Chen. The Deny in the tower has been had. MTW definitely not happy about that. Latch going to come out. Shackle going to come out. Does not latch, however. Anyway, Beastmaster working his way towards that BK, not BKB, to an Aghanim Scepter. Brewmaster having drums of war in hand, not having much on him thus far. Lone Druid working his way towards a pipe, with of course that bear having the Radiance in its hand. Pause, rather. And where the hell is the rest of them? Chen has a mech, getting more delicious sentry wards. That's about all there is, all there is to it. Oh wait, Venomatsa. I mean, Venomatsa doesn't have anything, but that's fairly sound. Two braces, oh, he's rich, rich Venomatsa. Team of MTW just spending a little bit of time in their jungle, bringing out these Forge Spirits. Looks like they want to push this top lane. Or maybe go to mid, we'll have to wait and see. They definitely want to press the issue. They're in such a great position. I feel it would be great to take Rashan at this point. Even if they don't make use of the Aegis, the Golden XP will no doubt be advantageous, and it would deny their Lone Druid from getting it, which is the main thing you want to do, because, you know... It's better for them not to have that horrible, horrible Aegis of Immortality. And we saw it, that team fight that we saw before that they lost. MTW would have won that by a mile if that Lone Druid didn't have the Aegis. Recipe in hand for that pipe of inside going to be secured here by the bear. This is going to be great for the upcoming team fight because there's a lot of AoE spell damage to come out of MTW and a good chunk of it is going to be negated by, of course, that pipe of inside, but someone's going to get caught out shackled, but it doesn't latch, and the Brewmaster easily able to waddle his way to safety. Currently looking for a lone draw. We're looking for someone. Malthus stunned to land there on the bear. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so. Eidolon Converge is doing a little bit of damage. Trying to right-click Windrunner. Be careful there. Don't want to get entangled. The bear will ultimately be fine, as will the Windrunner. And the team of MTW deciding to retreat. 
Leaving the forward spirits just that little bit far behind, give a bit of vision, and TP back to this mid. Get the hell out of the danger zone. Smoke going to come out, we're going to look for a lone member of the team of MTW, see if we can pick something up. Beastmaster secure, finally securing himself that, that uh, Aghanim Scepter. Sunstrike? Ah, oh, they're checking for Rashan. Ooh, big team fight's going to happen next. We have the team of MTW smoked. Who's going to stay up on the... Seem we're going to have Kabap stay up on the high ground. Or maybe they realize that death is rolling in. And here comes the engagement. They're going to try and blink in. Brewmaster getting a split off. No black hole to come in just yet. The roar going to land there on the Enigma. Going to have to try and burst him down. But the ulti come in from the Lich. Bouncing between everyone. But that pipe is absorbing all the damage. The ulti come in. Fantastic ulti to pick up almost everyone. The roar has been used so it cannot be stopped. And the BKB as well. So it cannot be stopped, as I just said a few moments ago. Poison over to going to pick up, get a nice amount of hits there on the team of MTW. The bear going to take a fall. Bear's been taken down. Two members of MTW have taken a fall as well. I somehow managed to miss them. Enigma and the Lich taking a fall very rapidly with MTW coming out ahead in that team fight, which is going to leave Fnatic to maybe think about taking this Rashan. The thing is, they don't have the Lone Druid here, which is going to be a big defense sort of uh, damage soaker, is what I meant to say. But he's currently dead, and he's not going to be back for the next 45 seconds. Currently checking once again, they're not going on Rashan just yet. MTW are probably going to... The next big fight is going to be at Rashan. Actually, a few members have been caught out, and Voker taking a fall as well, and then Tinker's going to be the next fall. Raw going out on him, and lots of right click. The Venomous Gale going to land as well, and a Troll Trap trying to TP out, but it's not enough. Tinker buying back immediately with Chen getting himself a double kill. I do not know what they were doing. That seems silly. Shackle to the tree that Chen has indeed. Tinker teleporting back in indeed. The she Hex is going to land and he rapidly takes a fall with Tinker picking himself up a double kill. And Voker buying straight back into the game with three members of Fnatic down. I think it's a fantastic time to go for Rashan. And those buybacks will pay for itself if they get the kill on Rashan. Link immediately since that TP happened. Ghost walking themselves in, and this will be very easy for MTW to secure. However, I don't think Fnatic are going are just prepared to let them walk right over it. They want that Aegis of Immortality for themselves, and it will no doubt be an absolute boon in the next team fight. And this is where the next big engagement. Bear moving in, and it seems they're going to catch them out. Shackle going to land down, but it does not latch. However, in comes the Hex. In comes the Meteor, as well as that Cold Snap. And they're trying to right click the Bear down as fast as possible. Another Hex to come in, and the damage is going to be enough. The Bear will take a fall. Hand of God not coming in just in time. The Troll, troll Shaman's going to take a, take a fall as well. Team of MTW can back off and continue to secure this kill on the uh, Tornado. No, it's a Roshan. Thank you. Thank you. Game is in beta. The Fnatic are not giving up just yet. They're still waiting. They still... I think Venomats is thinking of maybe trying to steal it. But I don't think it's going to happen. The ward's been taken down. Kind of warning action going down once again. We have a gem, of course, in hand for that Venomancer. Holy crap, did he steal it? No. Radiance, that was very close. Brumas was thinking he almost did it. But Tinker picked up the Aegis of, of the Immortal and got the kill. And the team of MTW got the kill, rather. And now they're looking for another kill, speaking of kills. Kill on a hero this time. But alas, they will not have it. They will take the opportunity to simply back off. They've achieved a knife victory. We killed that annoying as hell lone druid. We got, we won the Rashan. We got the Jaegers of the Immortal. Let's take this opportunity to just back off. That was very close though. The Brewmaster almost stealing it. But thankfully, such a thing did not happen. At this moment, let's have a look at exactly what everyone has in their hand. Brewmaster not having much more than we had before. Looks like he's going to work his way towards a four staff. Chen also going to echo that statement, possibly working towards a four staff. Could be a Necro book as well. We'll have to wait and see. Beastmaster, of course, having that Agonims as we mentioned before. As the Lone Druid has Pipe, has Vlad's. And not that much in the bank. As to what he would go towards the next, we'll have to wait and see. Invoker. Still the same items being echoed as before. We have Enigma having Blink, having a BKB, having that pipe, uh, rather the mech. No pipe yet. Haven't turned that hood into a hood of defiance. Maybe we're just getting it for the extra little bit of spell damage. And Tinker looks like, not sure what he's working, oh, Shivers. Most likely working towards a Shivers guard. Has a Scythe of Vise, of course, as we've seen multiple times throughout the few team engagements. Rapidly force stopping into the trees and retreating to safety. It looks like the team of MTW. I'm surprised they're not pushing a little bit harder considering they've got that Aegis. Or at least trying to pick up kills. 
Windrunner, is this the wisest of ideas? I'm not entirely sure. Hex to land on the Lone Druid. Shackle going to come down as well. Nicely timed. The Rocket and the Laser doing nice chunk of damage. Another Hex to come in from the team of MTW. And that's just an easy kill on the Lone Druid. Pipe going to go down. It's not going to be enough. And a power shot. I mean, the Laser takes a final kill right there. And I'm going to continue to push this top lane. This is going to put Fnatic at a considerable disadvantage with the Bear being out of the action for the next 65 seconds. Of course, Beastmaster teleporting out of the jungle. Doesn't want to get caught out. And defense of this tier 2 tower, this the barracks actually, we've already taken down that tier 2 tower. Defending this barracks at the top lane is going to be difficult for Fnatic without that druid. But we don't forget we have the brewmaster, of course, the splits off cooldown. This is going to allow for a good engagement, a potentially good engagement to come in from the team of Fnatic. But it depends on who gets who first. If we get the black hole landing on that, or maybe just getting chain hexed to come in on that brewmaster, then uh, things are just going to go well in favor for the team of MTW. It seems we're going to press the issue right away. Rocket's coming out doing a little bit of damage, but not quite committing just yet. Just going to deal some damage to the tower. Plague Wall is doing a nice bit of defense, but it's not going to be enough in the end. Forge Spirit's coming in as well. Tinker teleporting back. She's going to return in to the fray in the next couple of moments. In comes the Blink as well, the Thunderclap. No split to come out just yet, however. Drunken Haze coming out of the Windrunner. No hits for you. But it doesn't matter that much. I don't think it does. Much of the machine's going to clear up this creep wave. Creep wave, easy peasy. The rocket's coming, doing a nice chunk of damage to anyone that's in range. And there's little they can do. The tier three tower takes a fall. Mech charge being used up, and here comes a split coming out, trying to do the damage. The mech charge going out, and the pipe being laid as well. But a black hole coming in. But again, it can't be stopped. I mean, it can be stopped, but the BKB means he cannot be stopped. I didn't notice that mech charge coming out. Is it enough? Power shot picking up a double kill right there. Venomancer buying straight back in the game. And Tinker is going to take a fall. Plague Ward doing a lot of damage, but he has that Aegis of the Immortal. In the meantime, who the hell is that? The Bear's going to take a fall. In comes the Beastmaster, Brewmaster rather. Is he going to, does he have the damage that he needs to do? Hex going to come in. Enigma getting very low in HP, and the Sun's right going to land as well. Beastmaster, Brewmaster taking a fall right there. It's really difficult to say. Actually, I'm saying Beastmaster, Brewmaster repeatedly. And I think Lone Druid is somehow associated with them. I think, I, I don't even know. I think because they're animals, animalistic type heroes. It was a nice little engagement for MTW. It went very much in their favor. Hex going to land here on the Lone Druid. Laser going to follow Shiver's Guard, but the Roar coming in doing a nice chunk of damage and stunning him right in his tracks, trying to force stuff his way to safety. Malphus stunned to land here on the Lone Druid as a Blink to Thunderclap coming in. Effing Mad getting very low in HP, and the Hex as well, Deafening Blast, and the Meteor coming in, but the Pipe has been charged, has been used, and uh, this is going to give them a little bit of AoE um, magic damage survivability that they need. And MTW going to take this opportunity to back off. We've had a nice victory. Let's not turn it into a defeat, or let's not let Fnatic break even. Very nicely done. Fnatic are in a not so great situation, as we've said many times before. They're going to have to try their hardest to defend. Are they going to be able to get farmed up in order to fight the force that MTW has? It's unlikely. If they win some team fights, they get good engagements, they could easily come back. But it would require MTW to do a few silly things. The best thing I feel they could do right now is continue to farm and try and pick off heroes that are on their own. Such as a Lich here. If we had vision of him trying to get a kill on him and maybe get a kill on the Windrunner as she's, you know, venturing around with no reinforcements nearby. Same would be said for every hero. If they can pick up a kill on the Tinker, it would be pretty friggin' fantastic for them. Because it means no more counter pushing, no more backdooring, no more split pushing for the next minute or so. Unless he buys back. Which he can actually do. He has so much money. Buyback's only half of the amount of gold that he has. Even if you got a kill on the Tinker, he would just go jump straight back into the game. But making him buy back does mean that, one, you get some gold and XP for the kill, and two, it means there's less gold for the items that he no doubt, want, no doubt wants to pick up. But MTW are not going to let them have that opportunity, immediately returning to this top lane to try and push it out. Want to secure a barracks. In comes the Tornado for the engagement, picking up the Lone Druid. Bit off timing there on the Meteor, definitely Blast to follow as well, but in comes the Blink to split. And the damage is going to be dealt. They have to back off. Raw to come in, landing on the Tinker, but the damage, there's no one there to commit. Being picked up in the air there by the Primal, by the Water Spirit. And currently right-clicking down on the Lich, who is going to take a fall by the looks of it. They're trying to save him as best as they possibly can, but I don't think the damage is going to be enough. Even we have the Spirit Bear being hexed up. The Water Spirit taking a fall there as well. Nice defense to come out from Fnatic. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so, because they've used up their significant cooldowns. Roar is on cooldown, although incidentally it is going to be off cooldown very soon. But the primal split is going to be on cooldown for the next 90 seconds. A little bit more than that. Rocket's coming out. A little bit of chunk of damage, but the axes are have been uh, landed in retaliation. Troll trap land on the tanker. Tinker deafening blast come out. Ten getting relatively low on HP. 
And the middle barracks, the melee barracks has fallen and the range barracks is going to fall. Actually, it was a range barracks. Oh, maybe they're named wrong. The top has been completely racks, and the team of MTW are going to transition over to the middle lane and try and do the same here. However, I don't think they have the mana, health, or cooldowns needed to do such a thing. Black Hole is still yet to be used, which is interesting. Haven't been able to get that good position just yet. And the team of Fnatic are now going to have to, pretty much for the rest of the game, game, dedicate resources at this top lane to make sure they don't lose their towers, which will happen if this lane is left unintended to, because of course Mega Creeps beat normal creeps, that goes without saying. They're going to press the issue, they're not going to give the Team of Fnatic any breathing room at all, pushing their way straight towards this middle tower, which it will take a fall, the tier 3 has no hope, no fortification is up either, and the melee barracks is going to take a fall next. They're going to try and engage, they're going to try and make sure that they don't get this barracks, are they going to be able to do it? Axe is coming in, in comes a bear, but a fantastic tornado and shackle to come in, definitely Blast going to follow as well as a hex going to land there on the bear, and a nice black hole to pick up, but not quite good enough, the BKB managing to stop in the raw coming in, and stopping that uh, black hole right in its tracks, trying to deal the damage there, ulti going to come in there from the lich, T fight commentating getting a little bit sloppy, Invoker getting relatively low on HP, has a slow on him, lots of poison damage being dealt, he's going to have to try and, Enigma trying to protect him, going to TP back as fast as possible. Nice, actually really nice defense to come in from Fnatic. They did that probably as best as they possibly could. They wait, waited for the opportune moment, which is of course right when the tower fell. They defended their barracks, and they're not done with that. It seems we're going to keep pushing forward, or maybe that was just for the creep wave. No, we were trying to go on the Tinker, but we didn't have something to stop him. They of course had the four stuff allowing him to escape back to safety. Team of MTW, going to go back and lick their wounds, maybe give the bottom lane a little bit of momentum. I think they're pretty happy with what they've done, but Fnatic are no doubt smiling at this. They did a fantastic little defense right there. If something like that keeps happening and they you know, pick up kills and they defend well, Fnatic can easily come back. Is it going to happen? I have my doubts. But we've seen before, I remember specifically from the Star Ladder, Na'Vi versus Mouse Sports, there was a game where Na'Vi was in a commanding lead such as how we are in now. In the meantime, Winona going to get caught out, Raw going to come out, Blink to the Primal Clap is going to happen very soon, and Winona pops exactly what the team of Fnatic need to be doing, picking up easy kills whenever they can. But back to what I was saying, Na'Vi was well ahead of Mouse Sports, however, Mouse Sports, they got some really good engagements whenever Na'Vi went to attack, they just had a fantastic defense and picked up many kills in the meantime. And that allowed Na'Vi to get the golden XP they needed and managed to actually secure a victory on Na'Vi. Sunstrike, they're checking for Rashan. Rashan is not up yet, but he is a few moments away from being. And this is where the next big fight is going to happen. If Fnatic can get their hands on an Aegis of the Immortal, it's going to be an absolute boon for their next team fight. Because that lone druid, he's hard enough to kill already. Now you're going to have to kill him twice. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. And Fnatic, or rather MTW, definitely want to make sure that they don't get their hands on that. While MTW don't quite benefit as significantly from it as Fnatic would because they have that really heavy tanky lone druid, they still want it nonetheless because if they have it, it means Fnatic doesn't have it. Chances are they give it to the Tinker. Well, we're not sure. We'll have to wait and see. Tinker's be a pretty obvious candidate. He dies, he can come straight back in and can't stop being annoying again. Which is exactly what Fnatic, or rather what Tinker does. A smoke game coming out, we're looking for an easy kill. I think we're waiting for Tinker to TP in down at the bottom lane. Is it going to happen? I don't think so, because the team of MTW no doubt want Rashan. Bear running around with that haste rune. Chen doing a little bit of scouting ahead. The team of MTW are also looking for any rogue warriors of the Fnatic side to, p to pick at, to pick down, take down. But I don't think they're going to find any. Team of MTW, surprised they're not venturing into the Rashan pit, but I guess you want to win a team fight before you take on Rashan, really. Because if you're fighting Rashan and they engage, it can be really bad for you. Or maybe MTW want them to try and take Rashan and get a black hole in there, and it is uh, pretty much GG. The team of Fnatic gets taken down, they can easily just stomp on the barracks. And this is actually really good. They're forcing Fnatic back to defend this barracks, and now they're going to take Rashan. This is brilliant by MTW. And Rashan's going to fall very rapidly, and Fnatic are soon going to realize what's how they realize they're back off. They're now doing Rashan. There's no way that they're not doing it. Using the conversions here to scout out ahead and see when the reinforcements are coming. This is very smart again by the Enigma. And they don't have quite the amount of damage that they needed, so they're just going to bait them out, and they're going to try and force an engagement here. Win the engagement, and then secure Rashan. And they can get a kill on the bear. It will 
will be all that matters. Shiva's guard to come out, and the shackle, but it doesn't latch, trying to get the shackle in the bear there, but they're going to settle for the bear. In comes a brewmaster, split to come out as well, and they're definitely going to do a little bit of damage. Hand of God coming out, being lifted in the air there by the by the water spirit, invoker being as well. I think that was Yules, actually. In comes the Tinker getting taken down. The nice little black hole to come out. Actually, it's not that great. I think... Okay, my brain's farting as of this very moment. Give me a moment to recover. And we can see the Primal Split doing a nice chunk of damage. Tinker getting very low on HP, being lifted in the air once again. I think that was by his own Yule. Actually, he doesn't have one. The Tinker is going to take a fall, trying to blink in. He might just barely escape. Shiva's Guard going to slow any pursuers. And the nice Ice Wall to come down. He's going to teleport away. He does successfully get away indeed. And Beastmaster will pay for trying to push himself a little bit too far forward. But the Broodmaster is going to teleport out as well. Now with that little victory that MTW has achieved, this is an easy Rashan. While their heroes are a little bit injured, maybe they're not even going to go for Rashan. They might just might just go straight for the Rax. I think they'll go for a Rax, and then they'll go for Rashan. They might just give this creep wave a little bit of momentum, and then we'll have to wait and see, won't we? They seem they're going to go for a Rax. These are both going to fall very rapidly. We do have a fortification up, however. However, if fortification was dropped... Fnatic wouldn't be able to make use of it because a good chunk of their members are currently dead. And they're going to rotate. We're not even going to bother with Rashan. Rotating to this bottom tower, tier 3 tower. MTW want to end this as fast as possible. Give Fnatic absolutely no breathing room. Rocket's going out, doing a little bit of damage. Blinking in. No black hole to come in though, but doing a nice chunk of damage. Mal Malvis on to land on the Brewmaster. And no split for you. I can hear them yelling out in the background. I actually can't. I'm making that up. In case you can figure that out. Mana on all departments are very low. I don't think anyone has some mana boots to use. And the GG's are being sh being had for both sides. GG well played coming out all around, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for my commentary getting a little bit sloppy towards the end. It got really bad. I think I'm just hungry, maybe. Who knows? But thankfully, I, I feel most of the game was fairly solid thus far. Tier 4 towers are going to quickly, rapidly fall. And the Ancient is now bare and naked and ready to be plowed. Will play coming out of both sides once again. Tinker is just wants to pick up the kills. We get stunned inside the fountain. That's going to be an easy kill for him. But in comes it. Lich ult. They're going to bounce around to a bit of damage. Hand of God coming out. Going to stop Ice Wall. Going to still the animation's a bit wrong. Tinker's daring indeed. Has a poison on him. Very low in HP, but he doesn't care in the slightest. In the meantime, the Ancient has taken a fall. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the continuing of the group stages of the defense. MTW versus the team of Fnatic. With MTW taking the victory up right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been The Defense. Special thanks to Raze and Ben Q for the sponsoring of this tournament, as well as Join Dota for the organization of it. My name has been Tosh Lee. I'll see you next time.